I'm in KL right now and I'm here to sell some property stuff of mine. Um, but then since I'm here, I wanted to make this uh, this trip a bit more worthwhile, not just for myself, but for you guys as well. And I'm not sure if you have heard of this guy, Vince Tan, but he's a really uh, established entrepreneur and I've known him for quite many years and he created his own entrepreneurship masterclass and he's been helping many people within short 12 month period of time become millionaires so um, I, I wanted him to share his gems of knowledge of his journey of what he went through in order to become who he is and uh, uh, what is the mindset that he to go through what are the tips what are the, the techniques that he, what wrong sorry I wanted to find out like what are the strategies he used and how he thinks so that I can pick out those little gems for you to apply to your own life okay so I'm going to invite him to to come up soon and uh, let's enjoy that that interview session Okay, a really good friend of mine who I've known for more than 10 years already. We started off speaking in the internet seminar circuit under Success Resources. Thank you, Success Resources. And that's where I got to know him. And uh, uh, we, when, when I first met him that time, we were both on the same stage as competitors, you know. But um, being the big brother of the, the entire circuit, uh, he actually shared with me. He he's one of my first stage mentor mentors. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah. one of my <laughs> first stage. See, I, I never told you this before, right? That yeah. that time I was so fearful. Uh. I reached there. I was the new guy. I was the underdog. There were so many more professional trainers, and you guys are my competitors. But yet you took me in as a friend, and you really shared with me tips that changed that my presentation on that stage and and that's how um i i realized that this guy is not about his achievements but the person is really willing to to help out and and i want to say thank you for that my, my student came to my workshop and uh -huh. after that he was um he was very uh like pumped up want to do business lah. Okay. So he start throwing me ideas, you know, like uh, ideas after ideas, like what he wants to do and all that. Uh -huh. And um, and most of the idea I rejected because okay. it was quite. Um, I think the idea was a little bit too much for him to swallow lah. Because okay. for example, he said he said uh, hey Vince, I want to start a high class coffee shop. Mm -mm. You know, like TWG, uh, mm. the high end tea shop, right? He wants mm. to do a high end coffee shop, you know, mm -mm. in the most expensive uh, shopping mall in Malaysia. For someone to start from scratch, uh, to uh. do one, throw me the idea, right? I uh. mean, it was a little bit, the risk is too high, uh, in my opinion. It's like uh. something like that would have cost at least one point something million just to even start. Yeah. So he was throwing me a lot of idea. Then after that, I was like, I keep throwing, I, I was like rejecting after one after another. Then until I was doing an event, uh. Uh, uh, I remember one of the evening lah. Then yeah. I, I told him, I said, his name is CK. I said, CK, uh, come and see me mm. uh, at this time. Mm. Then he came and see me. Then mm. I asked him, I said, so any updates or not? Mm. Then he's like, uh, he said, no loving I still don't have any idea. Mm. So then I told him, I said, I want you to go and take my idea, mm. go and sell mm. uh, white shirt. White shirts. White shirts, huh? 
okay uh. nothing special it's just white shirt yeah so he knew about this idea i told him before yeah but he but, but because i told him it's because then he felt that it was my idea so he didn't uh, like ask me for that idea yeah so then i said never mind you take it and do lah uh. so then i said i told i told him how roughly how the strategy is going to be like mm. then i said you going to do ah uh, i got mm. no time to handhold you all the way mm. so then i said i guess i'm gonna go london for mm. a workshop mm. then uh he go and book a flight okay the same flight that was flying to London go to London yeah so then he followed me to London sit beside me some more uh -huh. so that he has 13 hours with me <laughs> okay and and come back also same flight so he had like 20 hours with me and 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 so we we had a good conversation and all that uh -huh. so what happened next was uh, six months down the road mm. uh, we launched that business mm. it's called Ox White okay it stands for Oxford White lah. okay, okay oxwhite.com and selling white shirt mm. on the first day of the business we sold 4,000 white shirts mm. in 12 hours we collected half a million in the first day wow that's awesome we collected 1 million in the first 10 days that's wow that's awesome that's um, positioned as a high-end white shirt huh? our white shirt oh. is Hugo Boss quality oh. from the Hugo Boss factory okay but we are selling it at uh, US dollar 15 Wow. wow which is cheaper than any uh, any mid-range or slightly below mid-range white shirt also cannot fight our price <laughs> basically in ringgit 69 mm -hmm. you know what I mean so mm -hmm. if you went out and shopping for white shirt you know I mean generally any shirt uh, mm -hmm. even well, well uh, quite quite okay one uh, it's around like G2000 which mm -hmm. is quite an okay brand that yeah. we used to wear uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. that also is like 199 ringgit 169 yeah. ringgit yeah which is considered okay not too bad one yeah but at that hours is 69 yeah. but we are hugo boss quality what was the startup budget uh in fact Ooh. we advertise on facebook okay. we spent about hundred and fifty thousand. okay in the first two weeks okay of our launch but we pull in about one million in revenue so therefore we can cover our credit card yeah uh, and the staff wise is only like four people what's what's the lesson to learn here so what's interesting is this you know uh after that yeah uh the the business continued to grow yeah and uh, last month is month number 16 okay we did a fundraising okay we finally raised money from public to grow this business okay before this was purely internal okay so we did a crowdfunding uh uh fundraising that means like you know yeah. anyone can yeah then we went went to this platform called pitch in uh, yeah which i think i mean but i mean regardless of the platform uh, but yeah. generally the key is that you put yourself out there and tell people you want to raise money yeah and for a certain percentage you get whatever you know yeah so we became the biggest highest funded project in malaysia we raised five million ringgit yeah in uh one week yeah at a 22 million valuation wow and this this already in 16 months one number 16 one number 16 so the company is worth 22 million now okay and you know that guy mm. ck mm. he doesn't even play with the computer okay he is a personal assistant to his boss okay that means the boss asks him to do what he do what okay and he's a personal driver to his boss okay that's that's quite a bit to digest you know so like many is actually for many people out there are just ordinary folks like that huh? they'll be looking at this story and go whoa what what do i need to do to get to that first step so, so you see the key is this you know the the, the, the at first I see when I tell you the story and I'll tell you his background yeah and the assumption is that even you coming from so much of experience right you yeah. would probably have assumed that this guy probably got my hand playing background yeah. and stuff like that yeah. right why I didn't want to say his background first is because yeah. I want people to learn the first lesson here is that they I want people to believe mm. you know and I believe you some people believe that anyone out there can achieve success absolutely you know anyone out there can achieve and build successful e-commerce store e-commerce business mm. even though they rarely even play with a computer mm. because to give you even more detailed background to, to to authenticate this is that he's a personal assistant to his uncle actually okay so uh for 10 years already his okay. uncle is a number one watch seller okay in malaysia okay. that means offline retail business okay and and he at first engaged with me having conversations because he want me to help his uncle yeah 
to turn his business to a bit more digital. Yeah. It wasn't for him. Yeah. So a lot of things was accidental. Yeah. Then we became friends and all that kind of thing. Yeah. So, so he, mm-hmm. as his uncle, as his, that means his uncle trusts him a lot. Old yeah. people. Yeah. So he would drive his uncle around. Yeah. And then his uncle would sometimes tell him, hey, please, uh, uh, you know, usually what seller is a lot of Hong Kong uh, vendors and business partners. Huh? Yeah. So then when they come down to Malaysia, then he just drives them around, bring them to eat. So that's his job. You know, I'm I'm not saying his job is lousy. What I'm trying to say is that Agree. this is his work for the I, last ten years. I'm wondering what like what has he been absorbing over the years? And where he got the first guts to say, oh, hey, let's chong and do this. It because the original idea is already a very hefty big idea. Then he's got some guts in him already, isn't it? Okay. I guess he met me at the right time also. Uh, uh to a certain extent that you know, sometimes a lot of people, they get sick and tired of what they're doing. Yeah. Which I think probably 99% of whoever that's watching this video yeah. would have experienced this kind of cycle as well, right? Yeah. I mean, you the same, I'm the same as well. Yeah. Sometimes we do certain things after a while, we get sick and tired. Yeah. So he got sick and tired of um, doing what he's doing. Yeah. And he he just, in fact, mm. he just had a kid. Mm. Uh, like one year old or two year old kind of thing yeah uh, and the other one is uh, maybe a bit older yeah so he had two children yeah not too long ago yeah and yet he jumped out and do this business mm-hmm. and the re- and he dr- his driving force was the children yeah because when, when the children were cycling cycling yeah and then fall down yeah crying and all that yeah then he tell the children and said you know don't give up okay. you know try again okay and at that moment mm. trigger his head and he was thinking shit I tell my kid not to give up, mm. and but I'm still working for someone. Mm. I wanted to do business, mm. but I didn't have the guts to do it. Mm. What the hell am I doing? Who am I to tell my children not to give up when I don't even dare to try? I see. So that became his motivating force right. to say, okay, my if I want to have the right to teach yeah. my children, yeah. I have to do it. Okay. You know, okay. which I think if we take this into, into uh, the context, uh, yeah. think about it, yeah. it's true. Uh. Yeah. We teach our children, or oh, like that, cannot, like that, cannot, don't give up, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But do we have the rights to teach or not? Yeah. So and, you know, so we have to be the role model. You see, uh, now, okay, let's throw some limiting beliefs that the audience will throw. <laughs> limiting beliefs will be, wow, mo uh, my limited funds are there. The next thing is, what if I jump in and then later on, my okay. everything gets. I understand. Mm. So, first thing is that um, we funded all this with credit cards. Mm. Okay. Mm. Will it fail? Potentially, yeah. but we knew chances of failing is low. Mm. The reason is because uh, when I teach my student about mm. building business, mm. not just e-commerce, mm. uh, coincidentally we are talking about e-commerce topic, yeah. right? Yeah. So I just brought one of the case study yeah. uh, uh, out. Yeah. So uh, I always talk about validation. Yeah. Validation will minimize the risk of failure. Yeah. Okay. So in the e-commerce context, yeah. what happened was they did validation. Yeah. They put out like two, three different brand, mm. two, three different stories, mm. but selling the same thing. Mm. And then they do a lead gen. That okay. means like if you're interested in our story, in our product, okay. and one that's very, 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 very special offer, yeah. please fill out your email address. Yeah. When they fill out the email address, then they did a viral campaign yeah. in the second page to say that if you yeah. refer five friends, yeah. you will get to buy our top range white shirt yeah. for only 99 cents. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. That's so, the strategy. So then, what they do is that yeah. they start doing Facebook advertising, yeah. You know. So at first, to be honest with you, mm. without the viral campaign part, mm. you just say that we want to do a very special offer. Mm. We thought that the sixty-nine ringgit, you know, or fifteen US dollar is already a good deal, which is a good deal, but mm-hmm. just not good enough for deal. So when we mm. run the ads the first few days, yeah, we only get like so the something like uh, three hundred signups in two weeks. Okay. So we knew something not right. Okay. And we quickly changed the strategy. Yeah. We went crazy. Yeah. And when they sign up, we said you can get a 99 cent shirt. Okay. But only if you tell five friends. Okay. And the moment we rolled that out, okay. that improvement, we got like 5,000 signups in a day. So, so you see, you don't actually end up spending money like to the point that you spend 100,000 only to realize you fail. Yeah. We spend a few thousand ringgit, we already know already. Yeah. If it doesn't work out, we change until it succeed so that's the first thing people have to understand is that they always imagine too much like wow i need like 100 grand to make a successful event. but no True. you start with 1000 1000 1000 and then once you validate it's successful then you throw more money in yeah then you scale that, that's exactly the same philosophy i have even for starting up uh, that 
there are calculated risks, but there are ways that we can always calculate to ensure that on a per transaction basis, we don't lose money. Ma. Exactly. Yeah, so that's, that's the thing that I also want to send the message out is that um, your own profit calculator is probably the most important thing before you even throw in any money to start anything. But the good thing is that once you have a profit calculator, every transaction you know how much is the cost you need. Eh? And the surprising thing that me, people don't realize is huh, sometimes the cost could be as low as just uh, in Sing dollars, uh, one to five thousand Sing yeah, and ringgit would be about 10, 15,000 ringgit. That's not considered a very big budget, you know. No, it's not. It's not. Yeah. In fact, like I said again, number one, it can be funded by credit card. Yeah. And, and, and if you do it right, yeah. that is a 28 days, you know, before you need to pay for the credit card. Yeah. 28 days is very long time. Yeah. In fact, usually when you do a validation test, within one, two weeks, you will know already. Yeah. And then you scale up by the third week. By the fourth week, you get the sales in, yeah. you already can pay back already. On the worst case, if you delay by one month, yeah. right, you pay interest of 1.5%. What is there? And if I put in a worst case scenario, to be honest yeah. with you, lah, huh? let's say, I mean, a lot of people, they like to think of the worst case scenario, which yeah. again is very... It's a very bad mindset to begin with, lah. You know, but it's we cannot thinking really. Correct, but we cannot stop people thinking that yeah. way. But let's just say, let's just say. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure some people yeah. would think of the worst case scenario, like, yeah. oh, I spent hundred thousand, yeah. I owe ten credit card, yeah. I cannot afford to pay back, yeah. right? Not even the interest, right? Yeah. So what's gonna happen? Yeah. I always ask people. Then they say, oh, bank will chase you. Okay, bank will chase you. Then what happen next? Mm. And then and then they say, oh, you issue letter, lawyer letter, blah blah blah, blah all that. I say, okay. Mm. Ultimately, what happen? Oh, you have to declare bankruptcy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fine. The person that bankruptcy for three times become the president of the United States. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, maybe whoever that's listening, you should bankrupt three times and become the president of your own country. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that, yeah. see, but I mean, like, that is a, such a clear proof. Yeah. And Donald Trump is not even shy to say it. Yeah. And yet we have this kind of belief system that's stopping us, but yet we see that this guy out there is the mm. most powerful person right now. Mm. He bankruptcy three times. Mm and you still become the most powerful person in the world. So the main point here is don't overthink. The in main, a way, the take a little bit of calculated risk. The main point is that yeah. people over um, the, 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 the negative things are maybe it's just like, like that, you know. Mm. But when it goes into their head, uh, then they start to like, manifest and like, Whoa, like they thought it's the end of the world kind of thing, you know. Mm. But at the end of the day, they are focused on the wrong thing, you see. Mm -hmm. When we tell people to use credit card to use to do the business, huh? yeah. what they focus on? The 18% interest rate. Yeah. But I'm thinking like, why are you focusing on the 18% interest rate yeah. instead of focusing on the $5 million that you'll be making? Mm. Okay, awesome. So let's spin off from this. Huh? Now, uh, talking about niche selection, actually, white shirts is super simple. When many people will start to think, oh, work elaborate plans, la. I want to dominate the world, something special. La. Yeah. So what's your take? What, do you have any criteria for niche selection? Okay, uh, maybe my, my school thoughts may be slightly different from yours. You uh -huh. know? I, but which is good. We and can be okay, okay, able to the conversation, yeah. right? Yeah. I always ask my student, choose something that you love to sell. Okay. Right? And the reason for that is very simple. Uh, uh, of course, I came from I, internet marketing background as well. Yeah. I also know about like, choosing the niche and the product that can that has a demand then you go for it yeah. you know but i start from uh, i said ask yourself what you would enjoy selling that means like the product that you love or whatever it is right yeah. from there um you know then then work out what what is the product or whether yeah. you want to oem or you want to work with factory to manufacture something or whatever yeah and then that do a validation yeah again i always talk about doing validation because you see because people say that vince you sell what you love but doesn't mean people buy yeah i, I, I agree yeah so i'm um, but i'm just saying that yeah. start from that first yeah. and do validation who yeah. knows if the validation shows that what you love yeah. is what many people love yeah then you will enjoy the whole process even more isn't it you know but if it doesn't work out of course you have to then go with second or third or fourth products you understand okay. what i mean and you know what's the beautiful part about this yeah coming back to the white shirt right yeah a lot of people will be wondering, oh, Vince, you go to Hugo Boss Factory, blah, 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 all these other things. Yeah, so, yeah. Sounds like, ah. yeah. but do you know that we did a pre-order model? Okay. Do you know when we deliver the white shirt to our customer? 90 days after they pay. Oh, okay. 90 days. It's unheard of. All right. Yeah. Even you will probably think like, Vince, are you nuts? Ah? <laughs> we probably got to do it in one week. Who wants to pay for white shirt for 90 yeah, days? Yeah. We managed to pull it off. We collected over a million and yeah. we delivered the white shirt 90 days later. 
What do you think was the key for people to accept this 90 days? Story is number one. Mm. That means our story, the way that we craft, mm. makes people feel that they want to be part of this. You know? Okay. I always tell people that story is always number one. If you cannot, if you don't sell story, yeah. then people will start to go into their logical mind. Yeah. And they will start to talk about uh, your product, how good, what feature you have, what price and all that. These are all logical yeah. uh, behavior. Yeah. But we don't want people to be in logical state. We want people to be in an emotional stage. Yeah. So we will tell them that, you know, uh, like the white shirt we're doing is Asian cutting. And the reason why a lot of men don't look good on their white, white shirt or whatever shirt is mm. because all is from Europe and US, whatever that fits, they bring it here. Mm -hmm. So there's no such thing as Asian cutting. So we cannot be Asian cutting, you know? So we, we that's the story that we tell. Mm -hmm. And then people are like, oh yeah, no wonder a lot of men don't look good because the sleeve is too long and stuff like that. So we went through process to make sure that we get the right Asian cutting. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I, I want to come back to this word validation and maybe you should comment on my philosophy. Yeah. Because uh, I come out from, my target audience are usually people who are new, mm. also with these kind of fears. And my philosophy is make use of data to get your validation first, to see what you think would be selling well almost 80-90% of the time. So we cannot be 100% sure, but at least we know that. Select that, split test it out, to with different marketplaces to see if that product that is what data the data tells us sells well then we select to do Correct. but after doing well there is still a process of taking small quantity then increasing as the sales come in I understand uh, then after that put a brand on it that's, that's my process what's your comment on that? I mean it, it works mm. I mean both, both process works at the other day mm. um, is the why I on my end, I encourage my student to do this way. Mm. Is the reason is because both has a sim similar outcome. On, to mm. be honest, if you think mm. about it, one is you have a certain places that you can grab your data from. Mm. But whereas on this end, mm. you might be able to discover something that totally no data would tell you that that could be su have been successful. Yeah. But you have to collect own data, yeah. which is a little bit more work. Yeah. But the potential of the, that in return for potentially higher returns in a way because that means I do validation that means I have to collect the data yeah, yeah. whereas your method could have been using certain tools or ever keywords tool or whatever all these different tools to yeah. give you certain kind of data and certainty yeah. mine is that for so from zero we have yeah. to collect the data so therefore we may end up discovering that there are certain things that we never thought that could have sold like white shirt yeah. would have been a bit uh, out of whack in a way like <laughs> I know. I I don't see it that way to be honest. Okay. I actually think that's quite brilliant because simplicity sells. Yeah. And you created a story around the simplicity and you gave it a a uniqueness, a uniqueness to be Asian cut. And actually that is all the basic points of the story that people really needed to buy. I, I, I really see that. Come back to something that we've been talking about, validation. Now, data can you tell so much. Gut feel is also a certain factor. In your opinion, like doing business, uh, say on a 100% basis, or how much should be gut feel? If we can quantify it. Lah. To be honest, okay. I use instinct and gut feeling as the early stage mm. decision making. Mm. But as it gets closer to implementation, mm. I will still use uh, data and using validation technique to validate it. And I and if the validation seems to be very not good, mm -hmm. it's very unlikely I will, I will proceed. Even uh. though my initial gut feeling tell me that it could be good. So if you ask me, I still place data quite um, probably 80%. Okay, well that, that's, that's actually an important point. Gut feel first, um, try it out. Yeah. Then as your process go, you let the data reveal to you if this is a good. To proceed. Yes. Okay. If, your, if your data tell you it's not a good outcome, even after you make some changes, copy change and all these other things, and after three, four, five attempts, I would say, uh, usually I will like try, try five times, you know. After validate five times, it doesn't work, right? Yeah. Then maybe it's something I have to pull back already. Okay, awesome. Um, one of the questions I prepared for you uh, is like, if let's say a person has got only like 5,000 sing and they have to make something work in 30 days or uh, more like 6 months. Uh, I think your story just now already covers it's quite a lot of it already. Correct. So so the thing is, is uh, I think what how you say it just now when you summarize and you say that 
uh, s- people overcomplicate things. Mm. You know? Mm. And why this guy was able to be so successful, if you think about it, his background, he's the he's a personal assistant, mm. he drives his boss around and he go and um, you know, uh, help out with a bit here and everywhere. Mm. Nothing related to e-commerce. Yeah. But you know what? Sometimes you see, uh, even though you teach your students to do e-commerce, right? Mm. If there's certain thing that they are weak in, mm. which I would want to emphasize to people who are listening to this is that sometimes you can also find other people mm. to complement your weakness mm. and build the business together. Mm. It doesn't mean you have to do it by yourself. I think mm. this is something that I really want to push it out there mm. um, because you can always find co-founders, you know, or two, three partners mm. that maybe you are just doesn't cut for it to mm. after you learn the e-commerce from, from, mm. from you, for example, mm. you know, you know the concept, you know how to do it console, but mm. it doesn't mean you have to do the technical part. Mm. Once you know it, maybe you can find a guy who's very good technical, so you leave it to them. Mm. You would like to maybe only do products. Mm. Then you go out, out and just do products. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm. Do what you love, outs- outsource the rest, or even partner up with someone else to do that. Mm. And you know what this guy, CK, the Oxford mm. guy, white mm. shirt guy did? Mm. He's, uh, he knows that digital marketing is important. I told him, digital marketing is important, please go and find someone. Mm. So he went and looked for someone to do digital marketing. Mm-hmm. And he looked for someone to do, in fact, now he has one person that just to do a product. Mm. That means R&D, research, and go and source. Mm. And then he got one person just to do online marketing. He got the person to do the designing part. Mm. His area of expertise end up, he's very good in connecting people. Uh-huh. That's what he learned from his uncle. Because his uncle had to deal with a lot of people every day. Mm-hmm. So this also share a lesson. Yeah. If something you're not good, mm. don't give up. Mm. Find someone who can do that part mm. because that person may not have gone to your class. Mm. Uh, so then this guy become got a value because mm. he went to your class, mm. he learned already, mm. he got a big picture already. Mm. Now he's going to look for people to do the sub-component parts mm. that he doesn't like to do. I think sometimes how this comes now uh, from my experience so to the initial impression that people have about the business or our business. Sometimes what we tell them is supposed to be the business actually is too big for them to even fathom from beginning so maybe let's now right from the start from experience in hindsight actually now you want to start how you should how you should position or think how big it, more like what's the picture to, to to put together to me to me it's very simple the process is first thing is mm. after let's say let's say someone have learned e-commerce from mm. you or whoever mm. and all that right mm. Uh, I think before even start, right? Mm. I think that person had to ask himself first thing is, why is he doing this? Uh? I, I mean, yeah, uh, 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 sounds very cliche, but I actually, think, I I have the philosophy same thing. Why? I think I think they have to ask themselves why they are doing this, yeah. right? Even if even if yes, the why is money. Yeah. But I think the question they also have to ask themselves is, why you want to make that much of money? You know, yeah. for who or for whatever it is, yeah. right? I think first is very, very clear about your own purpose. La, so yeah. okay? Now, once that is clear, assuming that is clear, every, you, you know you know what you want in yeah. life and blah, blah, blah and all that. Yeah. Then number two, ask yourself, what out of the whole entire blueprint of building a successful e-commerce store, yeah. what is your core competency? Yeah. Which part of this whole thing that you love to do and you think you're so damn good in doing? Yeah. All right? Yeah. Because it will be a certain part that you may not like it or you may not very good in doing it. Yeah. You know? Or even you do one attempt early, then you will know that oh actually I'm I like to do the A part. I don't like to do the B and C and D part. Mm. Now if that's the case, mm. start hunting down for team members. Mm. These team members are um are they mostly employees or co founders? No. I mean they, they could they could potentially be co founders. Uh. Usually yeah. the first three, four people are co founders. Uh. Yeah. And I think that's very important. Yeah. To increase chance of success uh, mm. for any business or mm. even in my in my opinion, is to work as a team together. Mm. Of course, work as a team has its own potential conflict. Mm. So therefore, you have to choose people that you truly believe in. Uh. Mm-hmm. It may it may not be perfect one. Mm. Things can go wrong one. Mm. But I still strongly believe mm. the benefit will outweigh the disadvantage. Mm. I believe is that if any student take whatever they teach uh, and think from the business mindset mm. instead of thinking from just I want to get rich fast by selling item A, B, C. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Then they are able to build a much more long-term sustainable business. Agree. Because if they do, imagine trying to do everything by yourself. I mean, we went, I think we went through this hell before. Yeah. We thought we need to set up our own website. We have to go and do our own ads. We have to design ourselves, blah, blah, blah. And everything yeah, yeah, all yeah. that. Oh my God. By the time we actually launch something, end up like, too late already, everybody in the conversation. We lose, uh, lose our steam, yeah. you know. Wow, four months later, we didn't get to launch it. Yeah. You know? 
but when we work as a, if we knew this earlier yeah. i mean like today if you want to start anything we can we can literally get it done within a yeah. few days yeah. because why we will not do the design by ourselves we get the we team together our website by yeah. ourselves either we got a team or we will outsource outside. no matter what yeah so the key is to let go of your non core competency yeah. and keep doing just your core competency i think this will increase the chance of success dramatically and mm. sometimes when we say this kind of thing uh, mm. the, the, maybe the, the audience who's watching this they will have thinking that ah, does it mean I have to spend money to hire people again it's a, it's a limitation way. Right. you go to Upwork you can get somebody or Fiverr you can get somebody really cheap right? or if you're willing to talk to enough people yeah. you will get people who is at the same passion as you yeah. and willing to work part time for free yeah. in return to be a co-founder with some equity yeah. it's possible it, ha- it happens it happens just yeah. that when we say something like that, the first yeah. thing that comes in the head, they will go and think of the negative part like, yeah. shit, I need to look for money. I, yeah. I don't have money. I don't yeah. have money to hire. But who say you need money to hire in the first place? So again, these are yeah. things that, I mean, hopefully the, the, the viewers can, you know, get something out of this. Definitely. Yeah. And, and the why part to me is also important, not just for personal, but for business. Like, like for example, Bill Gates. Huh? When, when he first started out, his why was, I just want to put one computer on every table in the world. It wasn't money, you know, and I think this kind of motivating force uh, goes beyond the money. Uh, uh, quote some Bible quotes. Uh, they say, if you seek for the face of God, uh, money comes on the right hand. So, in, in my opinion, it's, it comes down to purpose. Uh. If let's right. say your purpose is clear enough, uh, purpose of business is clear enough, uh, money will just come as you continue to fulfill the purpose. Actually, it's, it's uh, very simple. I mean, I came up with this circle of wealth yeah. to explain this very well. Okay. okay. Very simple. Now, when we set out to do something, mm. we aim to achieve certain things. For example, mm. we want to aim to make uh, 10,000, for example. Mm. Mm. You and I know, uh, chances are, mm. we usually aim quite high, la, but mm. we end up making like, if you can make 7, 8 grand uh, mm. out of the 10 grand target, if you mm. are actually quite good already, mm. if you can hit then uh, mm. it's kind of like maybe got a little bit of luck involved as well mm-hmm. right mm. so w- first thing is we all agree that usually whatever we aim to achieve yeah we will probably miss it yeah by 20 30 percent yeah uh which is still good right yeah so with this understanding yeah here's the thing right yeah i've been interviewed thousands of people all this time you know yeah. to hire people and all that yeah and i asked them hey what's your uh, aspiration what do you want to achieve in life and all that yeah and I think you will also experience the same thing. A lot of them will tell you, oh, I want financial freedom. Yeah. I I want to make more money so I can travel. Yeah. I can buy this thing. I can buy a house. I can, I, I, it's all about I, yeah. I, I, right? Yeah. So with this, uh, now you imagine the circle, this first circle is you. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. If you only think about yourself, mm-hmm. chances are you probably will never make enough. Yeah. Because it's the same concept as if I want to target make 10,000, I yeah. am making 8,000, right? Yeah. So if I think about myself, I'll never make enough. I always don't have enough. Let's call that the shave off rule. Uh. Correct. Yeah. So now yeah. you expand the circle. Yeah. You think about your family. Yeah. Okay. So the second circle is uh, outside of you. Now yeah. it's family, right? Yeah. And you will start to realize that, you know, when you were single that time, uh, mm. you always feel like you never have enough money, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's like, even your one person, uh, you still feel like, Shh, I, I still need to make more money, more money, more money. I never have yeah. enough. Yeah. Now, when you have children and family, yeah. how come uh, magically, right, you have enough for yourself and for your family? <laughs> yeah. This is something a lot of people don't realize. Uh, yeah. It just happened magically. Yeah. But the reason is because you start to think about your family, your loved ones, your kids and your children and your wife. Yeah. And whatever action that you do every single day from that point onwards, yeah. it's about them. Yeah. And because of that train of thoughts, yeah. your wealth increase. Yeah. Now, let's make it even bigger. Now, let's make it even bigger. Yeah. From family, yeah. talk about the world. Yeah. Now, if you start thinking about the world mm. and every action that you do, mm. whatever step that you take, mm. it's all about the world. Mm. That means beyond your family, mm. what's going to happen? You're going to make enough for yourself you're gonna make it now for your family mm. you can even make some extra money to help the world as well yeah so the key here is this yeah stop thinking about yourself mm. it's not from inside out it's from outside in you know mm. you know when you start to think about people beyond your family mm. your wealth will go beyond whatever that you need mm. and even whatever your family need and you even have extra to help the world as well mm. but coming to this just let me add on a little bit more mm. because i'm pretty sure people that's watching this video will first say Vince, 
I cannot even help myself. You ask me to help the world. <laughs> it's always this case, right? <laughs> we get that a lot. And yeah. I can tell you, that is the exact reason why people are not making enough. Yeah. Because they think that they need to think from inside out. Yeah. But when they have this mentality, they cannot get out, you know, because they are not even making enough. Yeah. As I said before, yeah. you keep thinking about yourself, you will yeah. never make enough. Yeah. But when you start thinking about the world, you can make more than enough for the world and for yourself as well. So how, this is one tips that I always give that works 99% of the time, mm. right? How to train yourself to think about the world, mm. okay? To have that mindset, right? Mm. I always say, whoever that's watching this video, mm. Dedicate one day in a month mm. to do charity. Mm. And I don't mean by using money. Mm. Must contribute your time mm. either to go and visit some hospital or orphanage or mm. elderly home or whatever it is. Mm -mm. At least half a day to one day, help them. Mm. You know, And if you don't know who to help, go mm. to the hospital that for children with cancer. Mm. They are the people, in my opinion, I felt really heartbreaking when I see them. Mm. They really need help. And you know, you cannot even help them because they have cancer. Mm. You only can help them by reading storybooks to them, play toys with them. Mm. You know, they, they just need this simple thing. Mm. If you do this every month, mm. and this is a real tip, if you do this every single month for 12 months, mm. I guarantee you, mm. your wealth will increase. You know why? Mm. Because when you start doing first month, second mm. month, mm. And when you help people, mm. and when you see when people smile at you and grateful mm. and thank you to you, mm. you feel very happy, one. Mm. When we do charity, we give things out. We are very happy, one. Mm. It's uh, the the how our human works, right? Yeah. And number two, you start to realize, holy shit, I can make this kid happy, and this yeah. kid is not even my kid. Yeah. That means I'm able to help someone that has no blood relationship with me. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you when and and that makes you happy, mm. and you want more happiness. Yeah. And therefore, you feel that like I want to do even more. Yeah. And then that's where you start to think that, can I make more money yeah. and use my money yeah. to create even more of this happiness yeah. effect or not? Yeah. So then your your thoughts will change and your action will change and that will change your wealth as well. Totally agree. Because many people think that huh, only when you're depressed, so then you need to work very hard. But no, when you're happy, that's where the activities come in. Right. Yeah. And, and a lot of people think that, once I can save myself, then I can save other people. Uh, that, that's no. the very big problem. That's the wrong, that's the wrong formula. And that's why a lot of people always get stuck. You know, like how, um, for example, Mark Zuckerberg, when he yeah. built a Facebook, yeah. he's not building the Facebook to say that, oh, because I want to connect to my girlfriend and my yeah. mother and my father. Yeah. That's all. No, yeah. he wants to connect all the university students. Yeah. So he think from other people, not yeah. just his family. Yeah. That's, the, that's how Facebook becomes so big. Awesome. Hey, thank that. So here's the thing. Um, this is this is even new to me because I I give to charity monetary wise. So I don't I don't spend that much time going to charities. Even that for me is like okay. I'm gonna take the challenge that every month go help somebody yeah, and, and help somebody that cannot return me in, in return in I mean cannot return back to me that kind of. And, and and you see how that shift your mindset. And yeah. I can tell you the uh to be honest right. Yeah. I I even test like what group of people to help uh, uh. that gives me the highest effect on this right uh. i realize helping children with cancer is one of the biggest effect on me okay because i i can trust me when you go there you're gonna cry yeah. imagine three years old four years old five years old people got cancer yeah not only not only you 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 it makes you there's so much of gratitude yeah of, uh, in your heart and yeah. and number one of course you feel grateful that you are alive yeah number two you felt that my god you know there are people like this that I could have helped and make them happy. You just yeah. need to read them storybook, they are so happy already. Yeah, true. One one of the charities that I support is Make-A-Wish Foundation. Uh. Children who are already dying already, and they got one last wish only. Yeah. And you just help them fulfill the last wish. So if- That's through donation, right? Uh, donation, but then it's not through donation only. They actually want volunteers also. Ah, okay. So sometimes their wish could be as simple as take them to a trip to somewhere. Exactly. And if you are that volunteer person to help take them to a Correct. trip, fulfill that one wish before they die. Best is you involve physically. Yeah. That's why I say don't use money. Yeah. That means you have to burn your own time yeah. uh, to, to try it out. That will give you the biggest effect. I yeah. tested this and I even put 50 of my students into this experiment. Yeah. And in 12 months, yeah. they definitely became richer than previously. Just because of this one simple habit. Awesome. Can I adopt that with my students as well? Yes. With your permission. Might want to do some activity like that also. Yes. Uh, now, let's go deeper. There must be something that happened to you that caused you to think this way. So, what happened? Well, I, I guess 
circumstances change along the way uh. and you know I you know that um, uh, throughout us knowing each other for the last 10 old years uh, and you know that I <laughs> my wife delivered triplets yeah. and you know I've I have, I have three daughters, yeah. you know, and and I guess I also derive a lot of strength from them, yeah, and derive a lot of strength from this setting up of this family, yeah, and it's extremely challenging, and I think you agree as well. I mean, we yeah. we went we way back talk, and we talked a lot about yeah. these things, you know, we went through our own challenges as well. But I think from the challenges, we initially, you know, just like everyone else, we see these challenges maybe in a little bit more negative lights yeah. you know um, just like all first time parents does right yeah. it's like oh my god why am I going through this and other things yeah. but and then as we mature yeah. then we derive strength out of it yeah. no longer a negative but a positive yeah. and then when our children interact with us yeah. and then we start to you know derive even more positive things out of it and I guess all these things has effect on me mm. uh, why is because I the responsibility towards our children mm. is probably the biggest responsibility of our entire life. Yeah. Uh, that means we can be falling asleep running our business yeah. and, and, and tomorrow do it again if we fail. Yeah. But with kids, there's no second chance. That means if you fall asleep taking care of children, your children fall down, you know, yeah. not their head and all that, yeah. you are in trouble, you know. Yeah. So that kind of made me feel that, holy crap, you know, I I I want to do the best I could, mm. you know. And um, and from there, then I started to, you know, um, do things from a very different perspective. Yeah. Uh, and that's how I start to derive all these things that we talk about. Yeah. Uh, and also at the same time, um, you know, when, when we go and train other people and all that. Yeah. I, I guess training other people has always been something that we've been doing all this while. Yeah. But I realized that the difference between when I train people after I have family yeah. and before I have family, yeah. that's a very significant difference. I think that really because many people don't know deep deep what happened also because remember when you first had triplets actually Vince was very lost at that time Vince was like suddenly uh, three <laughs> and then there were not just the, the pregnancy complications and all that yeah, a lot of, I mean a lot of things goes through the head run because it's high risk yeah. and we also know that there will be like uh, sometimes you know one out of the two may just doesn't make it yeah. and they have to stay in there until everyone come out at the same time yeah. so imagine what would the, the my wife go through if if assuming that happened you know yeah. so there was a lot of all this risk and you know it's quite scary to be honest with you yeah. I mean of course touch wood now everything is great you know yeah. uh, they, they came out fine and all that yeah. but I think uh, having family make one if I were to say it right there was one significant difference that um, having family uh, have changed me is that I start to adopt this what I call as servant leadership mm. that means I feel that I live to serve mm. like how I serve my children mm. how I serve my wife how I serve my family mm. I start to take that and apply it into everything that I do mm. so for example like uh, doing workshops mm. right teaching them and all that mm. I, I apply this a lot and mm. not only that in my workshop mm. my crew members mm. that help out with the workshop, distribute paper la, or whatever, all this kind of mundane stuff, right? Yeah. Do you know that 80% of my crew members are multi-millionaire? Okay. They come back to serve the community. Okay. And why I instill that is because I want people to remember where we came from. It is this workshop that make you become successful mm. and I want you to come back to serve other people. Mm. Because when we build this kind of culture, mm. then number one, it keeps them grounded mm. it makes them humble mm. and it makes them serve other people mm. and when other people get served by all these successful people mm. then they also feel like wow I, I have to make sure that when I'm there I also want to be like all these crew members that once used to serve me as well mm. and we managed to create this culture to the point that mm. now the workshop or the retreat that we do and all that mm. people only talk about one thing mm. our culture is just a very it makes them feel so humbled by the culture yeah. and they want to be involved in this community because of the culture yeah so it's more than just a workshop it's more than just a retreat yeah you know it's the culture that bond us together and this is a very healthy culture yeah and people wants to be in this culture and and that was the differentiating factor that they say uh, about the things that i did 
Yeah. In fact, uh, quite a lot of people yeah. who is uh, they went to a lot of mastermind retreat. Uh, yeah. And I cannot name names, but I can tell you is that they even say that some of the top two, three people that you have will see in YouTube all the time, all the very highly successful people, yeah. and they say that my mastermind retreat yeah. blow every single one of them away because of the culture here. They realize that, oh my God, why people here are so nice, so humble, yeah. and all that. It's yeah. not just about that speaker up there, you know, he's the God and all that, and we have to we have to follow his style and all that. Yeah. No, it was the other way around. So that is one of the biggest changes in my life throughout these few years. Huh? And in a nutshell, it'll be servant leadership. Yes. And I would take it one more step as I understand what you say. It's not just about the servant leadership culture, but the community that got built around this culture that gave people a sense that now we belong to a group or a mission really. Correct. Correct. Yeah. I mean, call whatever you want, or yeah. even some people say that, uh, you know, uh, we are building a cult and all that. I, yeah. I think the word cult sometimes take it a little bit too negative context. Uh, I, culture it, has got cult in it anyway, right? It is, it is. Yeah. But if it's a, if, if this cult uh, is about great culture, doing yeah. great things, something yeah. good, yeah. what's wrong with being a cult? Yeah. That, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. In fact, uh, the, 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 the I think we change the word cult to just following law. It's still okay, right? I mean, again, uh, words are just words. Uh. Yeah. At the end of the day, I think at the end of the day, it's staying true to our mission. Uh. Yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah. Two, two other groups of people come to mind. No children, no family kind. I have a belief that uh, if you don't have children, you must have some kind of burden, some kind of responsibility. <laughs> then you get some motivation. What do you think people with no children can adopt to yeah, that's why I said, the, go and oh the go charity, the charity now, okay. So, then, so then they will start to feel like wow. I mean, they have a sense of belonging to some good cause, bigger thing. Yeah, you know, bigger yeah. thing. Like, yeah, correct. It's got to be bigger than themselves, lah. Yeah. If they forever think about ah, I want to make my money to tomorrow. I want to buy a bag. Uh, next year yeah. I want to buy a shoe and all that. Yeah. Um, the that cost is not big enough, ah. There, there's another group of people comes to mind those super egoistic kind one that are I, me, myself, the world and sometimes these people in front of other people they have one portrait but in front of the video is them themselves they have what can you say to them to help them reflect on themselves I, I can only tell them don't come close to me eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, sometimes but, we but don't say seriously, that seriously seriously I, I can, I can I, I'll, I'll be very blunt here I I make it a point to tell everyone in the world that yeah. you know don't ever bring anyone that that thing that they're so full of themselves to into yeah. my community because yeah. there's no room for this. Yeah. I say, and those of you who hear this, if you feel hurt about it, mm. then you got to reflect on yourself, lah. Mm -mm. If you think you feel hurt or insulted by what I just said, mm. then you probably have to think why you feel so, lah. You know, mm. if you think that being who you are right now and and the kind of behavior you have mm. can get you to where you want to go, by mm. all means, go ahead. I'm I I mean, you have your own rights. You know, maybe mm. you it could make you work. Mm. You know, because sometimes people who are ego are driven to a certain mm. extent, and they could achieve certain sense of achievement as well. Mm. You know, everyone has their own rights to achieve success. Mm. All right, and I don't want to single out and say that ego people will never be successful. Mm. All right, there are people who are very ego, but because of their ego, they got no choice. Mm. They have to force themselves to learn. Mm. All right, they are mm. by themselves and do everything by themselves, and mm. they still succeed. There's mm. such thing. Mm. I say, good job for you. Mm. You know, keep it up. You mm. know. Um, just that it doesn't gel with me yeah. okay yeah. and and I think there's a lesson to learn here as well is that yeah. surround yourself with people yeah. that you want to be surrounded with yeah. simple as that you know yeah. you don't have to feel bad about it mm. you don't have to feel sorry about it if mm. that person is not around you or that person don't want to join you or that person is ego and you feel that ah, why is he ego he should come and join me don't be so ego and all that mm. to me it doesn't matter. Mm. Everyone has their own crowd and their own group at the end of the day. Mm. I think we continue to surround ourselves with mm. the people that we want to be surrounded with, mm -hmm. that we think we can help or can help us in return. Mm. We are fine. Mm. You get what I mean? Mm. Uh, because time is just so short and mm. I mean, it's just so limited that we don't have time to serve people that that is the, 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 the their, their mentality and mindset is just so big of a difference that it, it makes no sense for us to try to tweak too much of that. You get what I mean? The golden rule comes to mind. Uh, do to others what you want to have others do to you. Lor. And in a way, um, 做人, uh, 对得起天, 对得起地, 对得起自己良心, uh, 
that means that the ego people also think the same way as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> they, they, they think the same way as well. They, feel, they don't feel guilty about it. Uh, but well. we have a they choice know. to say stay away from me. Uh. Yeah, yeah, correct. We have a choice to say, you know, you, yeah. you, you go ahead, you do what you need to do. Yeah. You know, we just do what we need to do. Yeah. You just do what you do. Yeah. Maybe both of us also got some slight difference in the way that we do things. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Right? We, I mean, I don't hurt you. You don't hurt yeah. me. I do my own thing. Yeah. All right? But unless the person want to hurt me, of course, yeah. then I have to retaliate. But if not, then I just continue to focus on what I focus. I think the key is to focus on objective, you know. Yeah. That means if you set out to achieve certain things. Yeah. Focus on doing that. Yeah. Everything else is a distraction, I can tell you. Okay, awesome. That, that comes to my next question. Now, in business so many years, right? Now, we hear Jeff Bezos say, maybe we ask him, what's going to change in the next 10 years? But in actual fact, he said, I'll focus on what's never going to change in the next 10 years. So, in terms of business or in hindsight, uh, what do you think are those fundamentals that will never change that when you focus on, you'll be successful? I can, I can tell you, uh. it's just building a lot of things, somewhere else basic fundamental one uh. and the most important fundamental to focus on is uh. Uh, how human behavior works mm. this is a subject that i've been quietly studying by myself for the last 20 years mm. you see if we focus on human behavior right mm. human behavior for the longest time never change one mm. humans when they take action uh, or they make some decision uh, mm. is only driven by two things only mm. greed and fear Mm. All right, mm. and if we can focus on these two parts mm. and master these two parts, right? Mm. We can sell anything under the sun. If you think about it, so it's like persuasion. We yeah. in in I mean, in the the, the thing is that here. what's going on in here mm. never changed, you know, for the mm. last twenty years. Mm. You see, so you can learn whatever tactics you want, whatever marketing tactics or Facebook as whatever kind of things are, mm. Mm. but must never forget it comes down to two basic fundamentals only: mm. greed and fear. Mm. All right, if we understand that fundamentally, mm. and whatever that we do, mm. all right, is based on these two factors, mm. we will be successful. Okay, so marketing is all about message towards the greed or the fear. Correct. But the power of the fear is more powerful than greed. Lah. But mm. this too is the most powerful driving factor. Mm. All right. Mm. And um and it may sound a little bit uh evil or negative, but I want to say is that these two things, if you use it in a positive way, you create positive outcome. That means yeah. you deliver great product to customers, yeah. customers' life change for the better. Yeah. If you deliver shitty products, then then you know every, yeah, everything turns bad. Yeah. So you can use it in a positive way or negative way. Yeah. All right, but of course, I always encourage my students, please don't do evil with it. Lah. Especially now on the internet, everything is about reviews and feedback. Huh? Cannot, cannot run away. Huh? So might as well do everything clean. That's why like uh, Oxford, right? Yeah. And after we did white shirt, yeah. we did bags. Yeah. And our bags is from the same factory as Tumi and Samsonite. Okay. Every product that Oxford delivered from today onwards, mm. uh, from the first day, mm. it's always been about looking for the best factory. Mm. Like a... Uh, like uh, if we talk about cars, it'll be like we are looking at the BMW and Mercedes, mm. those high end, mm. but selling at Honda price. Mm -hmm. We are not trying to sell at super cheap price. Mm. The we sell mid range, mm. but at the super high quality. Mm. That was also my philosophy for Pikachu diapers. You know, the the highest quality, but we could afford lower because we cut out the middleman. We exactly. went through the internet to the end customer. Correct, and that's therefore we end up delivering great value to our customers. Yeah. You know, and 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 the, and we are so happy, and we are so proud, and continue to sell it even more. And we are not afraid to sell. Yeah. We are not afraid to use all kind of marketing tactics to sell as much as possible because we know the normal people use yeah. their diaper. Yeah, they're gonna fall in love with it. Yeah, and 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 they they will continue to buy it. Yeah, you know. But if you sell a crappy product, yeah. To get more margin and all that, yeah. the more people you sell to, the more complaints you're gonna get, yeah. the less proud you're gonna be, yeah. and end up, you know, you're just gonna kill yourself any other day. Yeah, that, that's a really important lesson for everyone here. Okay, so next question. Uh. Now, um, if you were to have, if you're given a chance to have dinner with three people, dead or alive, to talk about anything, who will be those three people and why? I never really thought about that but yeah. spontaneously if you ask me I would probably want to first that came to my mind would probably be people like Elon Musk yeah mm. the second one would be probably Microsoft CEO current CEO okay mm. maybe the third person would be someone like Jack Ma and, and the reason for that is not about the rich part yeah the reason for that is about elon musk and jack ma built from scratch mm. uh, from ground up mm. they are not being hands down 
mm. all right and i think i can learn something from people who build things from ground up mm. uh compared to like someone like microsoft ceo is uh interesting is because he's being hand down with microsoft mm. but when microsoft was at his lowest point the final question to ask here is um in 2020 um the the trends are changing and marketplaces are changing there are certain segments that that are booming um and many people are still unclear so what do you see as in the near future what kind of industries that people should focus on to be honest with you right um i i do get this question many uh, often right yeah. but i i always say that I'm not overly concerned about trying to predict mm. what will be the upcoming trend or niche of product, mm. right? Mm. I am always about um, whatever comes to my mind. Mm. No need to. I don't even need to ask myself. I do. Does this will work or not work? Mm. If I my instinct tells me that mm. sounds interesting, mm. just do validation. Mm. Validate works. Do doesn't work. Move on. I mean, mm. there's thousands and thousands of niche out there, right? Mm. So so I never try to second guess mm. but rather I continuous validation mm. so so that's that's my way of doing things all this while so because if we ask like what is the potential trend or potential mm. niche and all, yes mm. with our experience we can throw some things out there mm. but people who are listening to this may may I mean I I wouldn't really want them to rely on predictions mm. of all the different Uh, other people, whoever everyone is talking about and all that, yeah. but rather rely on something that you can rely upon, which is if you have something in your head, mm. set up a simple landing page, do some Facebook ads, mm. run it for one two days. Mm. That result will tell you already mm. better than whatever that kind of prediction that you can get out there. Mm. So that's that's my take on that. Awesome. Uh, let's talk a bit about marketplaces like Q10, Lazada, Shopee, Carousel, yep. those kind of things. Ah, what do you see? Um, the role of marketplace is in the bigger scheme of e-commerce i mean i think marketplace will continue to help out um people who are especially just started and all that mm. uh it does give them a little bit of leverage and you know a uh, lower barrier of entry mm. um but i think after a certain point in time the leverage will be tilted towards the other way around where they feel, where you know entrepreneurs get a little smarter and They know how to funnel them into their own sites and their mm. own brand and all that. Mm. Then they will start to see that the leverage will diminish, mm. and when they see the leverage diminish, then it's a very general progression that they will start to do their own stuff. Mm. And if there's enough people at a certain point in time with enough knowledge, enough skills, mm. and and you know the know how to 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 do their own stuff in mm. their own site, mm. then I think these marketplaces mm. may potentially find it a struggle. Okay, I suspect marketplace will struggle. Um. Uh. If it's not meet them, it may be in the next five or six years, or even ten years. I um, my take is this lah. Marketplaces eventually many will weed out, and only the strong ones will mm. really stay, like the bubble tea kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, marketplaces has got one fundamental, which is they will throw in money for traffic. And right. uh, sponsorships for Correct. people to buy, right. but yet that creates some kind of artificial, um, false sense that price is actually low to the customers. Right. But it's actually subsidized by marketplace. Correct. In the near future, my take on this is Lazada and Shopee, which is backed by Alibaba and Tencent, will probably become the dominant players. Because if we look back to the old days, ah, uh, when eBay bought over PayPal. Overnight success for PayPal, New York Stock Exchange, and all that, because they 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 dominated fintech in that region. What I see is Southeast Asia through Lazada and Shopee, there'll be that domination of fintech to bring in AliPay and WeChat Pay for that region. And because of that, I think the good way for a newbie would be follow these two marketplaces right. cross border to different countries, right. but still in the end begin with the end of mind is your own website, your own brand. Correct, correct. That's why I say, if there's a leverage, yeah, use it. Yeah, you know, if they subsidize your price, yeah, you you still don't lose money. Yeah, use it. Right, yeah. it's it's free marketing, it's free money. Yeah, who doesn't want to use it? Yeah. I would use it as well. Yeah, as much as I say that it's not an ideal place, uh, eventually, mm. but right now, mm. if I can get sales and get customer. Without paying or mm. paying very little, mm. use it. 
mm. you know if you see the leverage diminish mm. you make sure you have something prepared at the back there mm. you know because at the end of the day the keywords in the next five years in my opinion is going to be direct to consumer mm. direct to consumer business model is going to be huge mm. that means something like whatever we did with the white shirt and all that mm. you know come up with your own brand look for manufacturer to do it do a mm. great job mm. direct to consumer and low price like just like you do your Diapers. diaper yeah. direct consumer is a huge business and if if whoever that's watching this you start doing some research right mm. with this keyword direct to consumer startups you'll find there's a lot of success story out there selling luggage back only mm. uh, traveling luggage back and mm. doing a like uh, 200 million mm. US dollar mm. you know uh, and in the short of like three four years mm. you know and there's so many like vitamin pills la, or mineral uh, you know uh, multivitamin and all this kind of stuff so different different stuff like this mm. uh, direct to consumer has been mm. proven to be very interesting and very very successful mm. and I foresee that as a future trend as well cool. so leverage on marketplace but like you say have the other part in mind you have to do the other side as well yeah. and run concurrently because once this leverage drop you already got something here going on yeah you know awesome um, what's what's the what's your your mission and what would be the next thing for you to achieve so now my my goal is that I have shifted towards um, building ventures with my students mm. I realized that when I teach the entrepreneur master class mm. um, it was just for fun mm. but from for fun then I start to meet with a lot of students mm. some have ideas some don't have ideas some building stuff halfway and all that mm. and I realized that I could help them out and mm. take it to the next level mm. so now I play more the role of like I'm working with my students mm. all right as a business partner mm. and 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 they leverage on my brain and my knowledge and my know-how and my mm. experience mm. to help them to grow their business mm. you know to me you know owning owning five to ten percent of all these companies mm. you know uh, and helping them out mm. in whatever that they do mm. uh, makes a lot of sense for me mm. and 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 that's the best leverage of you know my own time as well okay so that's my main focus right now so my next four to five years is about grooming like 50 hundred companies and that's it you know awesome uh, how would you like to be remembered as well I would like if 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 I could I would love to people remember that you know I I have groomed 10,000 entrepreneurs in my lifetime that has probably affected another 100,000 people each through their products and services and, and things like that mm -hmm. because if, if the maths works out right that means mm -hmm. I have indirectly one way or another mm. have probably touched every single person's life you know through whatever that I do and that is what I want to achieve what would you say to your three daughters if someday they chance upon this video I just want to tell them that sorry that I cannot spend that much time with them mm. and, and, and I want to say that actually my children and my family and my wife are the real hero it's not me mm. they gave me the opportunity to do what I am doing right now mm. you know without their permission or without forcing them to give me that permission I would have never be able to do all these things mm. so if anyone can benefit from this video as well the reason why I can sit down here and do this with you rather than spending the last two hours with my children mm. is because my children allow me to do so mm. and my children and my family my wife is the real hero I'm not the hero mm. thank you <laughs> that really touches that Thank you very much. And uh, we, we, it was Vince Tan with Andrew Tan today. And I hope this conversation has uh, been able to help you in your own journey in success. And all the best to you. All right. Take care, everybody. Keep hustling. They can say, they can say it all sounds crazy. They can say, they can say you've lost my mind. I don't care, I don't care, so call me crazy We can live in a world that we desire